Well, that's the barrels put on, they're in place. The next thing to do was to check out the cylinder heads. Obviously while they were off, it was worth changing the valve springs because they'd been on there a little while. So we're going to put a fresh set of valve springs on and actually we needed to replace two of the valves. Just because uh, the shoulders on the top of the valves where the collets sit have actually um, like been damaged by where the collet was sat. So whether the material was a little bit soft, I don't know. So they are out, had to uh, file them down to be able to get them out. So we're going to put four new inlet valves in. The exhaust valves are absolutely fantastic, no problem. So we're just going to clean them up. But what we are going to do is, while it's all apart, um, is clean up our valve seats. So we're going to regrind our valves in. Obviously, relap the new valves in. Lap the new valves in. Sorry. But while I was there, I also did a bit of cleaning up of the ports as well. I've noticed the exhaust ports weren't that great. Not really great flow. There was some sort of funny edges on them, and quite a large build-up of carbon. So that's what I did. Did a bit of cleaning up. So I'll show you that. This is one of the cylinder heads. Um, I don't know if you can see, but this is the our exhaust. This is our exit. Uh, obviously decarboned now, and. This way through was sort of quite lumpy and not very smooth and nice flowing. So I've dressed that up as well. So that's a nice smooth exit now on all of the, on both cylinder heads. So it's time to get our valves lapped in. So let's get that a bit done. Got our exhaust valve. I'm just going to lube up the valve itself. Put a drop of fine grinding paste onto our exhaust valve. We don't really need a heavy sort of coarse paste at the moment because our, actually our seats are really good and our valves are really good. They just want a little tiny clean up. So we just use some fine paste. So that go in the hole, like so. We've got our magic twiddly stick, this one here. And then all we do is lap. So we go left and right, up and down, move it around. And what that's doing is uh, cutting a, a very fine um, face on the valve seat itself that's in the cylinder head and on the valve face itself. So we're just making a perfect gas tight seal. You can hear the sort of graininess of our paste so it's actually cutting and grinding the face of the valve seat and the guide itself. Uh, face and the seat itself, sorry, into one another. And then when it sounds smooth, just give it a little tap like so. And I'll just bring the paste back in to play on the seated area. And keep going like that. Right, well I'm going to get all of these done. And you can watch that sped up. The valves all lapped in, a little bit of a job, but done. The seats and the faces on the valves look really good, great match, perfect gas seal. So, next is assembly with our ooh, yeah, forgot, new bag of springs. Okay, assembly time. Not that easy to show you on camera, but I'll see what I can do. So, we're going to put in our exhaust valve in this number two cylinder. So, I've marked them one and two so I don't get them confused, and all the valves that correspond. I've marked as well, so it makes life a lot easier. So, let's get it set up. So a little bit of oil on the valve itself before it goes in. So down, slide them in. Next, take our spring, so we've got a big one and a small one. Out the packet. Small one sits inside the large one, like so, over the top of the valve, like that. And we've got the valve cap, so this goes on and pushes down over the spring, and then we put our collets in, which retains this cap and valve together. So, let's see if I can show you that. I use my special tool, which is a valve spring compressor. It should be set pretty much spot on. Right, next we get a collet, dob of grease on the collet itself so it sticks to the valve, makes life a bit easier, and a dob of grease on the back of the screwdriver, so now I can hold it and pop it into position, he says. There's 
And I'll do it this way round, just in case this springs off. And I'll call it lands on the bench, not on the floor, and then I can't find it. A lot of people like to do it the other way around, but I'm quite happy to do it this way. Right, once both, both collets are in place, I can now remove our spring compressor. And voila, there he is. So that's our double valve spring, the retaining cap, and the two collets are in there. And the valve's in. So I'll crack on and do the others. As you can see, our barrels are fitted to the engine with our pistons. I made sure we locked the flywheel in place so we haven't got any movement whatsoever. And also, I left the heads on overnight for the sealer to go off on the base of the barrels, as these have got spaces in to get the um, compression ratio correct. And then obviously, I've got the heads ready, so the heads have had the new valves inserted and all the valves lapped in. And now we're ready to assemble the heads to the engine. So we've got our four pushrod tubes here. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna pop the seals on. So we've got a seal that goes on either end. But first I'm just gonna pop a little tiny bit of our liquid seal around there, just for a little bit of insurance. Just to make sure that we're getting the best seal that we possibly can. Just like that. Over the top, be aware of the sharp edges on the tubes. And then just the last little bit of brushable sealer on the actual rubber rings themselves on the seals and then we're ready to assemble. So these are going to have to go on whilst I'm fitting the head so I'm going to pop the head on first as the head can slide onto the studs and then you can wiggle these into place and then push everything home. So that's one ready to go, I'll do the rest. Also just worth a mention these are actually shaped, I don't know if you can see that, but oh, I'm trying to get the camera to focus, there we go. They are actually shaped, so they've got like a chamfer. Now that sits into the head and into the block. So you make sure you get these around the right way. All right, head time. So we're gonna slide this on, as I say, just on the start on the studs, like so. And that'll give me enough uh, room underneath to start sliding our fishrod tubes in. Then we can slide it all together, tighten the heads up, and it'll all compress up lovely. So these are our four pressure tubes, already with our new seals on and a little tiny bit of that liquid sealer. It's like an aviation style sealer. As you can see, we've got miles to go before we're even close. There we go. A little gentle wiggle. Right, good. And incidentally, these can be pulled out slightly, depending on how, um, how far the cylinder head is away from the block. And then that all compresses up when it gets squished up. So if you're using your original ones, for instance, you can do that, clean them up. You can just wiggle that concertina piece out just to make them longer again so they squeeze back up with new seals, obviously. Don't use the old seals, definitely new seals, but you can reuse the tubes. Obviously, we've opted for new ones. This is the fiddly bit. So I've got four in place. Uh, they're not actually sat home yet, they're just sort of in limbo at the moment. So now we're just gonna start gently walking the head in, and then make sure that our pushrod tubes sit in position. So make sure they sat correctly in the cylinder head and in the block. So we've got quite a ways to go yet. It looks good. So we can get some bolts on, just start gently nipping it up, so getting it all home. We'll have to do it nice and evenly. And then once we've got it home, we can then do the correct torque setting. get all our nuts and washers in place first and then we can start winding it in home making sure everything's sitting correctly uh, especially those push rod tubes we want to make sure that they're located nicely and they don't get skew whiffed they stay nice and straight all our nuts are in place in the cylinder head so now I'm just going to start gently winding it home, but nice and evenly. So I'm going to do a nice even pattern across the cylinder head. Keep it even. Checking that everything's gone nice, sat in nicely. The tubes are nice and tight, you can't spin them. That's good, lovely. And then not to forget, I need to just take these home as well, Allen key, 7 Allen key. Uh, nuts at the top. 
Lovely, so everything is nipped up and in place. I'm happy with where the tubes are sat. The seals look like they've sat nice. A little bit of the seal has oozed out, so we know we've got a good seal there. Next is torque the cylinder head up correctly. So let's find the torque settings and torque the head up. When torquing up your cylinder head, we need to keep everything even. So on this one, for instance, I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that's the sequence I'm going to tighten it, and that's going to keep everything square as it tightens up. Again, I'm not going to go all the way with the torque setting straight away. We're just going to gently nip through. You can start with like a, a much lower setting on your torque wrench if you wish. I'm just going to do it by feel. I'm just going to start nipping it up. And again, as long as it's even, we're not hitting the torque setting yet. So I'm just going to keep it nice and even. Again, just pull it up gently. Got a similar, very similar feel across all of those nuts. Oh, that's that one, yeah. So again, I'll go back to the beginning and do the whole pattern again. And keep going through until we're at that torque setting when the torque wrench starts to click off. So I'm trying to keep an even amount of movement and an even feel in these nuts. Go back to the beginning and just keep repeating that process until we're at a point where our torque wrench clicks off. Right, clicks off. So that's set at uh, 37 Newton meters, which is our setting we require. That clicked off as well. See how nice and even that is. So that means I've done my job correctly and tighten those nuts nice and evenly. There we go. And now our torque settings coming into play. And there we have it. That's that cylinder head on and torqued up. So all we've got left to do is our push rods to go in, our rocker shaft assembly gone. But first we're going to get the head on the other side. point now where we're going to put our rocker shaft assemblies back on. First we need to put our push rods back in. But what's really important about these push rods and tappet combination is that they must go back in the same hole that they came out with originally. So that they're riding on the same uh, lobe of the camshaft that they always have done. So when I stripped everything from this side I kept it away from that side so even the rocker sem uh, shaft assemblies are going back on the same place they came off of. So this goes in. As we push it into the down the tube, there's a little flap on the end of the tappet, and as you twist, that flap slides into its location. Now it's sat riding on the camshaft. The same with all of these. I'm all a little twist, so get them all in. And then we can get our rocker shaft assemblies on. So that's this side. Come on, there we go. Little twist. Last twist. In he is. So next we can get a rocker shaft this side and, uh, and that side as well. Right, slide our rocker shaft assembly on. So make sure it's nice and clean. Sit across the top of the shaft. They're shaped and they're flat on top so the nuts sit on there nice. Then we put our little looking washer on. And then our nuts. And then we do these nuts up to uh, 24 newton meters, which isn't a lot. And then once that's done, we can then set our um, valve clearances across all of them. So we're ready to ooh, tighten up our rocker shaft, uh, our rocker shaft assembly. The torque setting is 24 newton meters, so it's not a lot. So we're just going to go nice and evenly across those two nuts that hold onto the post until it tightens up. Because obviously we're, we could be squeezing valves open now as well, so we go very gently. So it's nice and even, and then click them up. Lovely. Now we can get our valve clearances set. I've taken the flywheel locking tool out and what we need to do is get our rotor arm round to number one. This little notch here in the distributor, that denotes number one. Can you see that there? And obviously our distributor is firing off that way at the moment. So let's turn the crank and get our distributor in the right position to start with. So we just gently come on round to about there. 
We're getting close now. The next thing we need to look for is our TDC notch on the uh, front pulley there, you see? And then we're going to line that up with the two case halves, where, that, where the two case join, two cases join. That's our TDC mark there. Now we can go to cylinder number one and adjust our valve clearances. So this is cylinder number one. This is our exhaust and our inlet. We've got a little bit of movement on that one, not on that one. So we need to back these out until we can get our clearances correct. So obviously undo the lock nut. This one's already undone. And then by using a screwdriver, we're basically changing the gap between the top of the valve and our rocker arm here, the adjustment part. So what we need to do is have the correct clearance between here and here. Too big, that's going to be really rattly. Too tight and the valve will never close. If the valve never closes, then we'll end up burning the seat out. So we need to get that clearance correct. Now it does vary from engine to engine. The earlier engines were 4 thou and the later engines were saying 6 thou. So for some, this is an earlier engine, uh, but it's a bit more of a performance engine. So you could err on the side of caution and set to 6 thou across all of them and you'll be absolutely fine. It might be a little bit noisier, um, but absolutely safe. Especially with our modern fuels and stuff, it might be running a little bit more temperature than it would have done in its period. So I'm going to use my feeler blade to just check that gap. So we want to feel a little tiny bit of drag on that blade so we know it's at the correct size. If it falls through, then it's obviously too large. And if you're having to really work it through, then it's definitely too tight. But that feels good. I've got a nice little bit of drag on it so we can do that up. When we do this up, we have to be very careful we don't adjust that setting. So using your screwdriver, um, you want to make sure you can keep hold of the center and as you do the nut up. So again, if I can get that on there. Like so, get the screwdriver in it. Right, there we go. So I'm going to try and keep the screwdriver exactly where it is and then tighten that nut up. Just start nipping it. And then I'm just going to double check and make sure I haven't changed that setting. It's actually loosened off a little bit. So what the nut has done is actually pulled it up. So I'm just going to back the nut off slightly and just take this round a touch more. And just turn the screwdriver over an absolute fraction and then do it up again. We should find, yeah, now we've got a lovely perfect drag across that. So I'll go ahead and do that across on this one as well. And then I'll show you how to set up to do the rest. So once we're happy, we've got our number one valve clearances set to how we want to. We've still got our distributor pointing to our little notch here. And we're still pointing to TDC on our front pulley. Now to do number two, we're going to actually turn this anti-clockwise by 180 degrees. So I'm going to grab my little adjustable friend here and go all the way around until our TDC is lined up at the bottom. You can make another mark here. Actually, there is another mark there. Look, you see? There we go. Now what that means is we're 180 degrees backwards anti-clockwise from our firing stroke on number one. So that means we are now firing on number two, so we can go ahead and adjust the valve clearances on number two. Then once we're happy we've done number two, we can take this round another 180 degrees anti-clockwise, which will bring our TDC marks up from the bottom back up to the top, and our rotor arm will be back round this way, firing on number three, so we can then adjust number three. And then lastly, we can go around again another 180 degrees on this lower pulley so it would take our TDC to the bottom and our second mark, this one here, to the top again. And our distributor will be pointing right the way around here at number four then and then we can adjust number four and that's it. And then you can go through and double check them all again so you can set your distributor at number one and then you can do your 180 degrees backwards each time and move around your cylinders until you finish on number four. Now we can pop our rocker covers on, now we've got our valve clearances all set. Fresh new gaskets, make sure they sit on nice. Careful not to move them. When we, when we uh, pull the wire back up, because this wire can be quite tight, it holds the rocker covers on. And if you pull it too hard, you can shift your gaskets, you have to be careful that you're in the right position. And that was perfect. So 
Spark plugs are in. That is us pretty much ready to get all the other bits and bobs on it and get it ready to go back into the engine bay. fit our exhaust I'm just going to double check that our obviously our gaskets are matched because um, obviously I did quite a bit of cleaning up with the exhaust port and I matched it to this gasket but what I want to double check is that I've matched this to the actual exhaust itself so let's check that out well here's our exhaust and I'm gonna put the gasket on it remember this is matched to the cylinder head and it's actually quite lumpy uh, I don't know if you can see it because it's quite carboned up but there's a world that goes all the way around that is actually quite proud and that's in our way basically so I'm going to clean that up on both sides obviously not clean it all off so the flange falls off where it's welded on but there's an unnecessary lump there that we can get rid of and make it a much nicer flow on the exit there you can see some of the material that I've taken away from that lumpy world that was all the way around there so effectively what we've got now is the matched gasket to exhaust port there we go I've removed quite a lot of material, so it was in the way, both sides. Again, you can see there, I've had to remove that. And I used uh, a hand file, um, a tungsten carbide bit on our drill, and a barrel sander on the drill. I've got a little bit more to do on this one, actually. Just a little bit at the top there. And a barrel sander, which is here. So, hand file, tungsten carbide bit, and a barrel sander. So our port matching finished on the exhaust. I've also cleaned the face up here again with uh, a nice flat block and a bit of um, heavy duty sandpaper. I've done that on both sides. So this is now ready to get bolted onto the engine. Next job with Jack, whilst his engine is out, I think it's to try and put a bit of sound deadening in the engine bay, just to try and quieten him down a little bit, as he is quite a noisy little beast. So let's crack on with that. with its improved flow, now it's time to get the engine back in the engine bay. I'm refitting the engine the same way I took it out, so that's both carburetors off and the left hand inlet manifold off, so it gives me enough room to wiggle the engine into place. And then I can refit the tinware and the carburetors and inlet manifold once it's in situ. <laughs> it back in the engine bay now the task of putting all the bits back on it here you can see I've got the fan housing lifted up now you can see our brand new oil cooler just to give me access so I could get this inlet manifold fitted um, it's got to be fitted within the tinware obviously the tinware is one piece so the inlet manifold goes through and then bolts onto our cylinder head so there we go, just need to tighten that up and then we can get the rest of the tinware uh, back in place. All right, now it's carburetor time. One, two, three. Just about to put the banjo bolts on for the fuel pipes. A little tip, the old fibre washers, make sure you grease them up before you start wrenching on them. It just stops them tearing when they're doing up. Well, we are so close. As you can see, it's nearly all together. Well, in fact, it is all together. I've just got the plugs out. I've got the plugs out because I've spun it over without the plugs in just to get the oil pressure up before we fire it up. So next is the set of spark plugs and then the big fire up. 
Very exciting. We are now ready for fire up. As you can see, I've got the rear wheels off. Uh, reason being is that obviously when I fire up the engine for the first time, I want to put a little bit of load on that engine. So what I'm going to do is use the foot brakes, obviously with the rear wheel spinning around at whatever speed, we don't want that. So we take the wheels off and just have our hubs and our uh, drum spinning around. And we'll be putting a little bit of load on through the brake pedal just to force those piston rings up against the, the ball for the very first time. It's really important for that first sort of 20 minutes of firing up um, that we put a bit of load on the engine. Otherwise we could find that we we're end up not settling the rings in correctly. Anyway, so let's get to it. It would seem we have a bit of an oil leak. That's not good. But lucky enough, it's quite a simple one. It's this pipe here. It's decided to give up and leak oil. And it's leaking oil out of this part of the pipe at the bottom here where it's actually crimped on. You can see it's just wet in the center there. So we're gonna swap that out first. That's our oil feed pipe removed. This feeds the oil to the oil filter. It was all wet in the top here, and leaking out of here. I'd already loosened it off when I videoed it last time, so I don't want any of you saying, oh, it was loose. No, it wasn't loose, it was just leaking out of here. So, I don't know, it seems to, yeah, I can see how wet it is down there. It's just the crimp has given up for whatever reason. Okay, on with the new pipe. That's Jack done with his engine back in. I ran it for around 20 minutes with uh, putting the load on it through the brakes. And then after that, I double checked the ignition timer and reset it, uh, balanced both carburetors and reset the mixtures. So now we're ready to put the boot lid back on and take it for a run down the road. Time for a test drive. So we're keeping it free revving without overloading the engine, just to try and help break those rings in. Bit of an incline, so down to third, just gently. We're going to turn it actually here as well. But you get the general idea. So try and keep the thing free revving without overloading it. Although we want to put a little bit of load on, so uphill now, fourth the throttle, just to allow the RPM to build, and then change gears, same again without overloading it. That's it. Let's cruise and enjoy the sunshine. That's Jack's road test complete. Brilliant, really pleased with how that went, super smooth. So now we just need to get some miles on it before I give it back to Josh maybe, or do I get Josh to do the miles on it? Either way, anyway, Jack sorted. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please make sure you subscribe uh, so you get all the notifications of uh, all our future videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.